Hello, welcome to my channel. I am your friendly neighborhood Holy Bible Explainer. Today we are looking at Numbers 17. Numbers 17, Aaron's Staff Buds. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and get from them staffs, one for each father's house, from all their chiefs according to their father's houses, houses, twelve staffs. Write each man's name on his staff, and write Aaron's name on the staff of Levi or Levi, for there shall be one staff for the head of each father's house. Then you shall deposit them in the tent of meeting before the testimony where I meet with you. And the staff of the man whom I choose shall sprout. Thus I will make to cease from me the grumblings of the people of Israel, which they grumble against you. Moses spoke to the people of Israel and all their chiefs gave him staffs, one for each chief, according to their father's houses, twelve staffs, and the staff of Aaron was among their staffs. And Moses deposited the staffs before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. On the next day, Moses went into the tent of the testimony, and behold, the staff of Aaron for the house of Levi or Levi had sprouted and put forth buds and produced blossoms, and it bore ripe almonds, almonds, you know these nuts, almonds. There were nuts on there. And they were ripe, you know, you could just eat them. Then Moses brought out all the staffs from before the Lord to all the people of Israel. And they looked, and each man, each man took his staff. And the Lord said to Moses, Put back the staff of Aaron before the testimony to be kept as a sign for the rebels, that you may make an end of their grumblings against me, lest they die. Thus did Moses, as the Lord commanded him, so he did. And the people of Israel said to Moses, Behold, we perish, we are undone, we are all undone. Everyone who comes near, who comes near to the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Are we all to perish? Let's go on to Numbers 18. Numbers 18. Duties of priests and Levites. So the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear iniquity connected with the sanctuary. And you and your sons with you shall bear iniquity connected with your priesthood and with you bring your brothers also the tribe of Levi or Levi the tribe of your father that they may join you and minister to you while you and your sons with you are before the tent of the testimony they shall keep guard over you and over the whole tent but shall not come near to the vessels of the sanctuary or to the altar, lest they and you die. They shall join you and keep guard over the tent of meeting for all the service of the tent, and no outsider shall come near you, and you shall keep guard over the sanctuary and over the altar, that there may never again be wrath on the people of Israel. And behold, I have taken your brothers, 
the Levites from among the people of Israel. They are a gift to you, given to the Lord, to do the service of the tent of, of meeting. And you and your sons with you shall guard your priesthood for all that concerns the altar, and that is within that is within the veil, and you shall serve. I give your priesthood as a gift. Service of gift. And any outsider who comes near shall be put to death. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Behold, I have given you charge of the contributions made to me. All the consecrated things of the people of Israel, I have given them to you as a portion and to your sons as a perpetual due. This shall be yours of the most holy things reserved from the fire. Every offering of theirs, every grain offering of theirs, every sin offering of theirs, and every guilt offering of theirs which they render to me shall be most holy to you and to your sons. In a most holy place shall you eat it. Every male may eat it. It is holy to you. This also is yours. The, the contribution of their gift are the wave offerings of the people of Israel. I have given them to you and to your sons and daughters with you as a perpetual due. Everyone who is clean in your house may eat it. All the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and of the grain. Pardon me. <sighs> so all the best of the oil all the best of the wine and of the grain, the first fruits of what the people give to the Lord, I give to you. The first ripe fruits of all that is in their land, which they bring to the, to the Lord, shall be yours. Everyone who is clean in your house may eat it. Every devoted thing in Israel shall be yours. Everything that opens the womb of all flesh, whether man or beast, which they offer to the Lord shall be yours. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the firstborn of man you shall redeem, and the firstborn of unclean animals you shall redeem, and their redemption price at a month old you shall redeem them. You shall fix at five shekels in silver, according to the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty geras. But the firstborn of a cow, or the firstborn of a sheep, or the firstborn of a goat, you shall not redeem, they are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood on the altar, and shall burn their fat as a food offering, with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. But their flesh, flesh shall be yours as the, the breast is waved, and as the right thigh are yours, all the holy contributions that the people of Israel present to the Lord, I give to you and to your sons and daughters with you as a perpetual due. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord for you and for your offspring with you. And the Lord said to Aaron, You shall have no inheritance in their land, neither shall you have any portion among them. I am your portion and your inheritance among the people of Israel. To the Levites have given every tithe in Israel for an inheritance in return for their service that they do. Their service in the tent of, of meeting. 
so the people of Israel do not come near the tent of meeting, lest they bear sin and die. But the Levites shall do the service of the tent of meeting, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations, and among the people of Israel they shall have no inheritance. For the tithe of the people of Israel, which they present as a contribution to the Lord, I have given, given to the Levites for an inheritance. Therefore I have said of them that they shall have no inheritance among the people of Israel. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Moreover, you shall speak and say to the Levites, When you take from the people of Israel the tithe that I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall present a contribution from it to the Lord, a tithe of the tithe, and your contribution shall be counted to you as though it were the grain of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the winepress so you shall also present a contribution to the Lord from all your tithes which you receive from the people of Israel and from it you shall give the Lord's contribution to Aaron the priest out of all the gifts out of all the gifts to you, you shall present every contribution due to the Lord from each its best part is to be dedicated. Therefore you shall say to them, when you have offered from it the, the best of it, then the rest shall be counted to the Levites as produce of the threshing floor and as produce of the wine press and and you may eat it in any place you and your households for it is your reward in return for your service in the tent of meeting and you shall bear no sin by reason of it when you have contributed the best of it but you shall not profane the holy things of the people of Israel lest you die. Let's go on to Numbers 19. Numbers 19. Laws for purification. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, This is the statute of the law that the Lord has commanded. Tell the people of Israel to bring you a red uh, heifer. That's a cow. Without defect in which there is no blemish and on which a yoke has never come and you shall give it to Eleazar or Eleazar the priest and it shall be it this cow shall be taken outside the camp and slaughtered before him before Eleazar and Eleazar shall take some of the blood with his finger and sprinkle it toward the front of the tent of meet, meeting seven times and the heifer shall be burned in his sight its skin, its flesh and its blood with its dung uh, dung is uh, poop or feces it's, it's poo you know, it's solid waste shall be burned and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop or hyssop Remember, hyssop is like an oil. It's a... It's something like a fragrant oil. And scarlet yarn. And throw them into the fire, burning the heifer. Then the priest shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water and afterward he may come into the camp
but the priest shall be unclean until evening. The one who burns the heifer shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his body in water and shall be unclean, unclean until evening. And a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and deposit them outside the camp in a clean place and they shall be kept for the water for impurity for the congregation of the people of Israel it is a sin offering and the one who gathers the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening and this shall be a perpetual statute for the people of Israel and for the stranger who sojourns among them whoever touches the dead body of any person shall be unclean seven days he shall cleanse himself with the water on the third day and on the seventh day and so be clean but if he does not cleanse himself on the third day and on the seventh day he will not become clean whoever touches a dead person the body of anyone who has died so let's think about that for a second and does not cleanse himself defiles the tabernacle of the Lord and that person shall be cut off cut off from Israel remember that's he's gonna die because the water for impurity was not thrown on him he shall be unclean his uncleanness is still on him remember the seventh day is okay the first day is Sunday the seventh day would be Saturday but the Sabbath day, the seventh day is the Sabbath. It's, I don't know why, but it's Friday night to Saturday night. But the seventh day is Saturday, and the sixth day would be Friday. So again, the fifth day would be Thursday, and the fourth day would be Wednesday. So the third day would be Tuesday. Let's think about it. So Sunday would be the first day, Monday is the second day. And Tuesday's the third day. So if you don't uh, wash yourself, you know, take a shower or bath on Tuesday and Saturday, you will not become clean. This is the law when someone dies in a tent. Everyone who comes into the tent and every one who is in the tent in the tent shall be unclean seven days and every open vessel that has no cover fastened on it I get my cup Every open vessel that has no cover fastened on it is unclean. This is a clean cup. Whoever in the open field touches someone who was killed with a sword or has died or who died naturally or touches a human bone or a grave shall be unclean seven days for the unclean they shall they shall take some ashes of the burnt sin offering and fresh water shall be added in a vessel then a clean person shall take hyssop or hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it on the tent and and on all the furnishings and on the persons who were there and on whoever touched the bone or the slain or the dead or the grave and the person the clean person shall sprinkle it on the unclean 
on the third day and on the seventh day. Thus, on the seventh day, he shall cleanse him and he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and at, at evening he shall be clean. If the man who is unclean does not cleanse himself, that person shall be cut off from the midst of the assembly, since he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord, because the water for impurity has not been thrown on him. He is unclean, and it shall be a statute forever for them. The one who sprinkles the water for impurity shall wash his clothes, and the one who touches the water for impurity shall be unclean until evening, and whatever the unclean person touches shall be unclean, and anyone who touches it shall be unclean until evening. Thank you for listening. That was Numbers. We read many chapters. And I hope it's educational. There's a difference between education and things that are entertaining sometimes learning is fun it's not the same kind of fun like some people like to work out and some people have more common sense and think um, it's work you know Some people don't don't find working out work working out exercising fun. They don't. Some people probably don't. But if I can make learning the these explanations of the Bible more fun, leave a comment below. Let me know how. What happened there? I think the camera shook. I I'm, I didn't do an Indian head thing. It looks like it went like. Let me know in the comments below how I can better or make this more interesting. Remember, keep God first and take your places. Cut.